Good morning to one and all. Uh, welcome to the I ISEA workshop 2014. So we'll be uh, taking some uh, topics related to spiking neurons and uh, hardware related and robotics related uh, topics. And uh, I will be uh, taking mostly on this introduction to modeling and simple spiking neurons. So I'll give a brief overview of what are spiking neurons and uh, why we are using these mathematical concepts in neuroscience. So uh, continuing with the presentation, here you can see on the first slide that on the top left, uh, you can see a network-like structure. We are, this is the uh, cerebellum network, which you can see as spears and lines. So it's a very detailed model with all the connections, uh, etc. So we use like those large scale network models to simulate the mathematical uh, models like this. The equations which you can see here and there. So we use like those mathematical expressions to simulate like that large scale network models. So in the next slide, what I will do is, I will just give, uh, give an outline of what, what is going to be presented today and what I'm going to uh, discuss about spiking neurons and uh, some neuroscience uh, basic uh, discussions. So here, uh, the outline of the talk in this PPT will be basics in neuroscience, modeling concepts, simple spiking neurons, large networks, and then a small hands-on session with spiking models. So in the basics in neuroscience, what we will cover is, uh, since all of you are from, most of you are from engineering background, what we will do is, we will just uh, cover some basic neuroscience and then we will see how we can use modeling uh, in neuroscience. How models can be used to uh, show the uh, neurons behavior and how we can use them to simulate large scale network models. And then we will we'll see what are simple spiking neurons, so why are they so important and why should we use them. And then how we can use these simple spiking neurons and make large networks. And then we'll see a small hands-on session if we have the time. So here, in this slide, what you can basically see is basic neuroscience uh, uh, concept, uh, the synaptic communication, uh, which the neurons use for sending the signals from one part of the body to another. So what are neurons? Neurons are basically excitable cells capable of transmitting impulses over long distances. So suppose uh, you're walking uh, without any footwear and suddenly you uh, step on a thorn or a, a sharp stone, then uh, you basically retract your foot immediately. So the stimulus, there is the thorn or the sharp stone and what is the response is being processed in the brain and the brain tells what the uh, foot has to do to that stimulus. So it's basically retracting from that stimulus. So, so it's a harmful stimulus, so you retract your feet away from it. So the information is being relayed to brain and, it's, and gets processed and then uh, sends the signals to the foot and it uh, and tells what it has to do. So how is that signal conveyed from the foot to the brain? So through this uh, uh, neural nervous system, you can see the neurons one neuron connected to the other neuron through a uh, synapses. So these basal junctions, which you can see some contacts happening here, these are called synapses. So uh, I won't go much into details because uh, it's a very broad uh, concept and uh, since we are short of time, we'll, uh, we'll go through some important topics. So the uh, action potential. Action potential is a very important mechanism in communication of neurons. So neurons, we have seen in the previous slide that they communicate with each other. So how do they communicate? They communicate through this action potential. Action potential is an all or none potential. Means either the neuron will fire or it won't fire. So the action potential uh, is the uh, is a mechanism through which neurons can propagate signals over long distances. So, this figure you, we have seen in the earlier uh, slide, the communication between neurons. So, how the communication happens? Basically through these two channels. One is sodium channel and another is potassium channel. Of course, there are a lot of channels involved in neurons communication, but we 
restrict ourselves to these two most important channels the sodium channel which is which causes a depolarization depolarization means um, a particular neuron when it is in a polarized state so neuron which the biological neuron which you see has a polarized state which means the outside will be positive the outside meaning the outside of this membrane will be positive and the inside of this membrane which means inside this membrane it will be negative so this positive negative atmosphere separated by a thin membrane is uh, have, so is what uh, can be seen in a biological scenario and that's why you see it is in a polarized state so when a neuron receives signal the sodium channels start to open which is called depolarization means removing the polarized state and becoming depolarized state okay so the potassium channel here you see as a repolarization repolarization means the sodium channel basically disturbs the polarized state and the uh, potassium channels brings it back again uh, to the repolarized state means it helps in again bringing the neuron back to the repolarized state from the depolarized state so uh, let me help you explain uh, in a more detailed way as you can see an action potential uh, figure here uh, you can see a, a spike like uh, appearance here so when i say depolarization what you can understand is that a steep rise in the uh, membrane potential of the neuron so neurons have a membrane potential uh, that is caused uh, by the ionic fluxes and the uh, ionic difference between outside and inside of the neuronal membrane so here the depolarization refers to this uh, sharp rise and repolarization refers to the sharp decline so these two channels will help in getting like those signals and they were they have the capacity to travel to long distances so then uh, this picture basically shows what happens in that case i mean when you zoom in this picture you can see at the membrane level what happens so here what i was saying earlier outside and inside this is the inside of the neuronal membrane and this is the outside of the neuronal membrane so the outside atmosphere will be mostly positive and the inside atmosphere will be negative and when the signal comes these sodium channels which you can see as a small gates here will start to open uh, will start to open to that stimulus and let the sodium ions to get inside so when the sodium ions start to get inside the inside positive atmosphere will increase significantly or progressively and then thereby causing the increase in the membrane potential of the neuron likewise after a certain time the sodium channels start to close and potassium channels start to open and start pumping out the potassium ions outside so one might have a curious question like uh, uh, why uh, sodium ions outside why potassium ions uh, why sodium ions have to come from outside to inside and potassium goes from inside to outside it's basically the uh, positive atmosphere which i said earlier is mostly because of lot of sodium outside and likewise uh, the inside negative atmosphere is basically caused by the anions uh, which which are which uh, which were basically uh, part of metabolic activities of the cell and uh, uh, these two channels uh, uh, help in Uh, generating the action potential which will be helpful in signal transmission so after understanding what is the uh, how the neurons uh, transmit signals and uh, how they generate the action potential here we uh, two great uh, people hodgkin and huxley they basically developed a mathematical framework uh, observing the nerve impulses in the squid giant axon model so Uh, the squid uh, it's a sea animal which basically uh, escapes from its predators uh, very fastly by pumping 
some ink jet as a uh, defense mechanism and then escapes very fastly. So they have chosen that model since the axon is very huge to study and they can patch clamp the axon and can study how the, the squid axon neuron is uh, functioning or is, um, is conveying the responses. So what they did is uh, they studied the squid giant axon and they have come up with this model. So uh, you have conductances. So uh, it's a basic electric uh, circuit. Uh, so which you see the conductance, the current. Uh, this is a membrane you can consider the outside of the membrane and inside. So the membrane acts as a capacitor. And uh, you can see these uh, uh, conductances as ion channels. You have different ion channels here. So you have leakage ion channels, sodium, potassium, and different families of sodium potassium channels. And, uh, they, um, and when they constructed this model, they have taken uh, mostly two important uh, channels, which is uh, one is sodium and uh, another is potassium. And we have a leakage uh, conductance. So, so leakage ion channels are basically uh, leak the ion channels outside without any stimulus. I mean, they uh, even though stimulus is not there, these channels are prone to uh, leak some of the ion channels outside, causing uh, causing a little bit loss or uh, reduction in the membrane potential. So. Uh, that's this electronic circuit. Um, then we come to the equations which which they developed from this electric circuit. So I'm um, sorry, the equation, the image doesn't look uh, uh, good quality. Uh, but uh, what they did is they developed these mathematical equations considering they are like this, uh, uh, like this dynamics, and then they were able to get like this behavior, which is which is similar to the squid giant axon behavior. So if someone if uh, someone is interested, they can also go to Amrita Virtual Labs. Uh, we at Amrita Virtual Labs also developed a like this simulator, uh, which has similar HH dynamics. And uh, upon change of the stimulus, you can get different behaviors. So, Let's talk about uh, different models. Uh, uh, since uh, until now we have seen uh, the biology part of the neuroscience, and then uh, we went on how these uh, models are developed and uh, how they can imitate the uh, realistic neuronal behavior. Uh, let's see some different models. Here we have uh, biophysical models, uh, two main divisions here. One is biophysical models, another is simplified models. So under simplified models, we have uh, um, again five types, five subclassifications. So uh, not five subclassifications, subclassifications. There are many other models, uh, but uh, I would like to stress on these uh, uh, five uh, different simplified models. So one is uh, Fitzsuk Nagpo, another is Morris Nikar, integrated by developed by. Um, early neurophysiologists and then uh, we have Iskivich and then adaptive exponential integrated fire model. So the biophysical models are very detailed models uh, which means for each channel they have a separate mathematical equation and these mathematical equations uh, uh, describe the behavior of the ion channel. So suppose uh, you have uh, 52 ion channels and then uh, for each channel 2-3 uh, mathematical equations represent that ion channel. Uh, so you have a total of around uh, 150 or 200 uh, equations to simulate. So by simplified models, it doesn't have those many equations. They're basically uh, driven by two expressions. So one is taking the membrane potential to the peak and another is bringing down the potential back to the resting potential. So here uh, we will uh, talk about adaptive exponential integrated fire model. So adaptive exponential integrated fire model is a very uh, good model uh, which can show physiologically realistic neuronal behavior as well as it is very computational efficient. So these are the equations which describe this model. Uh, so you have a capacitance and a leakage dynamics 
combined combined with exponential rise of the sodium current. So earlier we have seen that the sodium current earlier we have seen that the sodium current contributes to the depolarization state. Uh, and it, uh, we can see a sharp rise in the sodium ions influx. So that kind of dynamics is being incorporated with this expression, exponential increase in sodium current. And we can see an adaptation uh, equation, which is W. Uh, adaptation, uh, adaptation basically helps in like, uh, uh, see the subthreshold oscillations. And uh, we have an injected current. So injected current means externally you can give some current and see how the model behaves. And then uh, this is the adaptation equation where you can see um, where you can see that uh, A, uh, A contributes to the subthreshold oscillations and uh, tau constant which is used for the adaptive as adaptation time constant. And uh, you can set values to these uh, variables and you can get the firing behavior of different neurons which you observe in brain. So the uh, uh, neurons can be cortical neurons or um, other different types of neurons so where, which it can uh, simulate most of their behavior. So uh, here network simulations. So, so how we can use such models to describe the network simulations. So uh, for, the, for a large scale network model like this, uh, we have to incorporate some synaptic dynamics along with the equations which we talked in the previous slide. So the synaptic dynamics uh, within this network are useful to convey information from one neuron to another. So these synaptic equations will help in um, regulating the post-synaptic membrane potential. Post-synaptic in the sense like earlier we have seen two neurons connecting to each other. The first neuron is called as presynaptic and the second neuron is called as the postsynaptic. So the postsynaptic membrane potential will be regulated by the presynaptic uh, uh, neuron response, which will be which will be uh, regulated by these uh, dynamics. So the GNMDA which you see is an NMDA channel, and uh, um, the G GABA which you see is the GABA channel. So GABA is mainly used for inhibitory uh, synapse and the NMDA is mainly used as an excitatory synapse. And we have uh, one more synaptic model called AMPA. So AMPA and NMDA are used for excitatory while the GABA is uh, used as inhibitory. And we use uh, these uh, mathematical expressions to simulate the synaptic dynamics observed uh, in, the, uh, in the experimental findings. Okay, uh, so with that, I conclude my talk and uh, I thank you all for coming here and uh, uh, and, we'll, and we'll, we have some other interesting talks later, uh, followed by uh, robotics, virtual labs and uh, some other talks related to computational neuroscience. Thank you one, one and all again for coming here and uh, uh, giving your time to Yeah. 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 Yeah.